A tangent is basically a straight line, but it's a very special kind of straight line. A tangent is a straight line that's going to barely touch a curved line at a single point, once and only once. Once again, here's the graph for y equals x squared. What you should be able to see is that there is one point only, which we've highlighted, where the blue line just barely touches the red curve. This is called the point of tangency. Of course, this line here isn't the only tangent for the parabola. There's millions of possible tangents. The location of the point of tangency here is about where x equals 1. The big idea with this particular point is that when x equals 1, the gradient of the tangent is the same as the gradient of the parabola. Since the gradient of the parabola is constantly changing, this split second is the only moment when this is going to happen. If we know where the tangent touches the parabola, then we can find its equation. We start by finding the gradient of the straight line. Since we know that the point where they touch is x equals 1, we also know that the gradient of the parabola is dy dx equals 2x. We can just replace the x with a 1 and find the gradient of the straight line. Remember the reason we're allowed to do this is because when x equals 1, the gradient of the straight line and the gradient of the parabola are the same. We start with the gradient equation of the parabola, then we replace the x with a 1, dy dx equals 2 times 1 equals 2. Great, but now what? We don't know the y-intercept of the straight line, so sadly we aren't able to use the y equals mx plus c equation. But since we know the x location of this point is 1, we can use the equation of the parabola to find the y location. We start with the plane equation of the parabola. This is the equation of the parabola and not the gradient. Now all we do is replace the x with a 1 once again to find the y value. y equals 1 squared equals 1. Right, so let's recap what we know so far about this mysterious blue tangent. It has a gradient of 2 and it passes through the point 1, 1. This information is enough to let us find the equation of the tangent. We need to use this straight line equation here. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We replace y1 with a 1, x1 with a 1 as well, and m with a 2. So y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 1. Then we expand it out, y minus 1 equals 2x minus 2, equals 2x minus 1. And just like that, we've managed to find the equation of that tangent, even though we started out knowing next to nothing about it. Every curved graph has turning points. A turning point can be either a maximum or a minimum. A maximum is what we see when the graph stops going up and starts going down like this. Something very special happens at these points. The gradient is zero. Or, like Isaac Newton would have preferred us to say it, dy dx equals zero. We can use this information to figure out where the turning points of a graph are located. For example, let's take the graph of y equals x cubed minus 4x plus 1. We've highlighted the two turning points that this graph has. To the left of the y-axis, there's a maximum, and to the right of the y-axis, there's a minimum. Let's start out by differentiating the equation of the line. dy dx equals 3x squared minus 4. Okay, great. Now remember that we said that the gradient at any turning point is always going to be 0. So let's go ahead and replace the dy dx, which just means gradient, with a 0. 3x squared minus 4 equals 0. And if we now go and solve this equation for x, we'll figure out where these two turning points are located. 3x squared equals 4, x squared equals 1.33, and so x equals positive or negative 1.15. So the maximum to the left is obviously at x equals negative 1.15, and the minimum to the right is at x equals 1.15. If we put together all the knowledge about differentiation that we've built up, 
then we can perform the incredible trick of starting out with the graph of an equation and drawing below it the graph of the gradient. This sounds strange, but it's really simple. We use these rules to help us out. When the graph has a turning point, the gradient crosses over the x-axis. When the graph is increasing or going up, the gradient is above the x-axis. And when the graph is decreasing or going down, the gradient is below the x-axis. If you run into this kind of question in your exam, you'll be given the original graph above, then on a set of axes directly below that, you'll have space to draw the gradient, just like this. Let's start out with the easiest part. Where are the turning points of the graph located? We find them, and then we draw some lines that go straight down to the bottom x-axis. Great, now let's move on to the rest of the graph. The entire portion of the graph that's to the left of the maximum is getting higher, so that part of the gradient must be above the x-axis. Excellent. Now what about the space that's between the two turning points? Since the line is going down for that entire area, the gradient for the same spot will have to be below the x-axis. Looking good. The last bit we need to draw is the part to the right of the minimum. Since this is where the graph is going up, the gradient will switch back to being above the x-axis. And just like that, we've taken the original equation and drawn the gradient. Basically, we started with a cubic, and we wound up with a parabola. This especially makes sense if we think about the algebra. We began with y equals x cubed minus 4x plus 1, and we ended up drawing something like dy dx equals 3x squared minus 4. This math just means that Whenever you get given a cubic and told to draw the gradient, you'll always end up drawing a parabola. Remember, differentiating just produces an equation that gives the gradient at any point on a graph. The gradient at any point on a graph is the same as the gradient of the tangent line to that point. Turning points of maximum and minimum values have gradients of zero.